Welcome to Battles and Beyond in today's day in World War II. On August 19, 1940, Italian forces achieved a significant victory by capturing Berbera, the capital of British Somaliland. The British defenders, finding themselves in a precarious position, retreated to Aden. With the fall of Berbera, the Italian invasion of the British colony was essentially complete. By the end of August, the Italians had extended their control, capturing key towns and forts along the borders with Sudan and Kenya, including Kasala, Galabat, and Moyalat, and Moyali. This phase of the conflict showcases the initial Italian successes in East Africa prior to the subsequent Allied counteroffensives in the region. August 19, 1942, witnessed Operation Jubilee, a daring raid by British and Canadian forces on the coastal town of Dieppe in France. Intended to gather intelligence and test German defenses, the operation quickly met with disaster. As the Allied troops landed, they faced a hail of gunfire from well-entrenched German positions. Many soldiers were either killed or taken prisoner. The operation serves as a grim reminder of the challenges of amphibious assaults and the need for meticulous planning and military operations. During the Quebec Conference on August 19, 1943, two of the principal Allied leaders, President Franklin D. Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill, came together to sign the Quebec Agreement this document was a testament to the close cooperation between the United States and the United Kingdom, laying out the terms of their collaboration on nuclear research. It was a pivotal moment in the development of atomic energy and the eventual creation of nuclear weapons. On August 19, 1944, as the tide of World War II was turning against the Axis powers, the French resistance in Paris ignited an uprising against the German occupiers bolstered by the knowledge that Allied forces were drawing near. Especially with their approach to the Seine River, this brave act of defiance was an attempt to free the city from Nazi control. This uprising laid the groundwork for the eventual liberation of Paris, marking a critical phase in the broader effort to free France. During a time of great uncertainty in Estonia on August 19, 1944, Juri Ulowitz, the acting head of state, made a significant radio broadcast. He called upon Estonian conscripts to resist the advancing Soviet armed forces, hoping to buy time until a peace treaty could be finalized with Germany. Ulowitz's call reflects the nation's complicated position during the war, trapped between two major powers and seeking to maintain some degree of autonomy and self-determination. In a spontaneous non-communist gathering in Hanoi on August 19, 1945, Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh emerged as influential figures in the movement to wrest power from the French colonialists. With the Japanese still holding control over Indochina, Emperor Bayo Dawi, sensing the political winds, cooperated with the Viet Minh. He believed, albeit mistakenly, that the Viet Minh's connections with the American OSS would secure Vietnam's independence. Shortly thereafter, Ho Chi Minh's forces took over Hanoi, establishing a provisional government and setting the stage for the next phase of Vietnam's struggle for independence. On August 19, 1945, simmering tensions between the Chinese nationalists and Chinese communists erupted into open conflict. Although both groups had cooperated to some extent against Japanese invaders during World War II, their underlying ideological differences and competing visions for China's future-made post-war cooperation increasingly untenable. This outbreak marked the beginning of the intense and protracted civil war that would determine China's political trajectory for decades to come. Thanks for watching Battles and Beyond. Also, be sure to check the link in the description for additional information. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay connected with our daily historical explorations.